I just completed and posted a three-part restoration of a Fender Princeton reverb amp from 1967. And before I start any restoration on a, one of these older and fairly valuable amplifiers, I always do as much research as I can to find out all I can about them. And I found a couple things about this one that were very puzzling to me initially. Uh, the tube chart said that it was a chassis number AA764. Now when I went to the internet to look this up, I was a little surprised to find that that was the uh, number for the chassis of a blackface Fender Champ or Vibro Champ. So I started to get a little nervous. Uh, did I have the wrong tube chart? Uh, was, is there something funny about this amp? And it made me nervous. Then when I read some more, people said, oh, well, that's just a typographical error on the tube chart. Uh, they just used old tube charts and put them in these amps. Well, you know, that's ridiculous because the tube array for a Fender Princeton uh, reverb is a whole lot different than for a Champ or Vibro Champ. So that didn't make any sense. They wouldn't use tube charts that had the wrong tubes. So uh, I just it seemed odd to me. Also, they said, oh, well, just use the... Uh, schematic for the AA 1164 um, chassis and ignore the fact it says 5U4B down here uh, because you have a GZ34 rectifier. Now I thought well that's kind of odd it seems strange that I have uh, schematics for virtually every Fender amplifier I've ever worked on and and they're telling me that there is no schematic for this and that just seemed, it just seemed implausible. And confronted with this just unrealistic situation that no schematic could exist, I set out to find one. And sure enough, after a whole lot of looking, I finally found a schematic for a AA 764 Princeton Reverb Amp. It's posted on the internet by a gentleman from Germany. Uh, his site is called Blue Glow. I will post his, uh, this link in the description of this, video, uh, this video so that you can uh, look up this schematic for yourself and download it. Uh, it does indeed have the GZ34 rectifier. And um, it, it just made me feel better to know that it did exist. I wrote the to my tube chart, it was just destroyed in my amp. Other than the AA 764, not much else was legible. So I just wrote the tubes down here to help me when I install the tubes back in the amp. While we're on the subject, let's discuss the GZ34 rectifier, which is, in my opinion, possibly the best rectifier ever put into a early uh, guitar amplifier. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, first off, the filament current through the heater filament is only 1.9 amps. That's for an Amperex. I assume that's the way it is for all of them. Um, whereas if you put in a 5U4, because everybody tells you that the uh, AA 1164 schematic is just perfect for your amp, you see that that schematic uses a 5U4 and you think, oh, well, I'll just plug one in. 5U4s draw 3 amps through the heater filament circuit. So you are going to overtax your already weak and wimpy power transformer in the Princeton Reverb amplifier if you do that. I think you're going to shorten the life of this power transformer. Not a good idea. Secondly, the GZ34 provides a very slow startup. So instead of sending just a torrent of electrons down here to all of the uh, tube plates, which uh, will shorten their lives, uh, and why a lot of people put a standby switch in the circuit to prevent that. 
Uh, the GZ34 has a cathode, unlike the 5U4, and the heater filament has to heat the cathode, so you have a slow startup with the GZ34, and it very gently brings the tubes up to their operating voltages. If you ever hook a voltmeter up, like to the plates of the 6V6s, and start up an amplifier with a GZ34, you're going to think that there must be a problem somewhere because it takes so long for these tubes to, to heat up um, and come up to operating voltage. But that's a good thing. It's like you have an automatic standby switch right here, in fact a superior one, that works uh, every time you turn on the amplifier. So the GZ34 is really a terrific uh, rectifier. Number three on the virtues of the GZ34 is that it's a very efficient rectifier with the, even the 1.9 uh, amps here in the heater circuit it puts out as much or more voltage in fact more usually than 5U4s so you get everything going for you slow uh, startup uh, you get the uh, very very efficient performance of the GZ34 and you get the low current draw of its filament circuit. So for that reason if you've got a AA764 uh, Princeton Reverb I really suggest that you invest in getting a GZ34 rectifier. Also just a little note of explanation here about what the AA764 means. It's not an identification of this design right here it's a statement of when this uh, schematic, uh, this circuit was designed. Um, it was designed in the seventh month, July of 1964. A single A would mean it's the first version. Double A means that it is the first revision of the first version of the schematic that was designed for the Princeton Reverb Amp in July of 1964. It's like two people with the same name. They're not the same people. Uh, this isn't a champ or a vibro champ. It's that this descriptor up here merely describes uh, it's the date of its origin. Well, that's it. Uh, nothing really earth-shaking. I know it's technical. It's dry. Uh, it also may be of great interest to people like me who got one of these amplifiers and wondered what the heck is going on here. Is it a typographical error? No, it's not. Does a schematic exist for my amp? Yes, it does. Um, and it just put my mind to ease. Now, I hope it does the same for you. I really appreciate your time and interest in watching this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel uh, to see a whole bunch more videos uh, less dry. Uh, of regarding the restoration and demonstration of other vintage amps and uh, jukeboxes and other uh, strange electronic devices that I cook up here in my uh, workshop. So thanks for uh, looking in and I hope to see you again soon.